Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this particular lecture, we want to talk about clathrin mediated endocytosis or clathrin mediated uh, engulfment of solid or liquid particles. So basically, to understand clathrin mediated endocytosis, it is the extension of your knowledge of receptor mediated endocytosis. So I want you to understand receptor mediated endocytosis first because there are so many things that I am going to refer to regarding the receptor mediated endocytosis that we have discussed in the earlier lecture. So I recommend you to watch that lecture first. But even if you don't watch that, you will still understand this. In a receptor mediated endocytosis what happens is that uh, in very simple terms I will explain this once to you that this is the membrane and in the membrane surface there will be a receptor, right? A cellular receptor, cell membrane, cell receptor. And let's say we are talking about a receptor mediated endocytosis of iron uptake, right? Our body uh, cells need iron. Why they need iron? Because uh, the hemoglobin's structure, if you look at the hemoglobin structure, the integral part of the hemoglobin structure is built with an iron at the center of the hemoglobin's cluster, right? So that iron is very necessary. And without the iron, the hemoglobin structure won't be good. And as a result, the oxygen binding capability of hemoglobin will be down. So for that, iron is necessary in all of our body. Iron deficiency will cause low hemoglobin, low RBC, and that may result in iron deficiency anemia in our body. So that's why in our body, there are cells where there are receptors on the surface of the cell. And let's say in this case, the receptor is uh, transferring transferrin receptor okay transferrin is a receptor for iron binding it's a receptor for iron binding okay so it requires for the iron to bind to it and when the iron binds to the transferrin receptor then the cell internalize this whole iron transferrin conjugate okay and as a result of which a cell receives iron okay so what happened why we call it receptor mediated endocytosis because this endocytosis is done or is regulatedly possible because the ligand that is iron bind to the receptor that is transferring and then the internalization happens then the internalization so let me again draw uh, with uh, this color so there will be internalization like this and uh, here will be something like this and this is our transferring and this is the iron okay internalization will be done and after the inter internalization is done so let me again draw this structure the internalization that will be done here like this and there will be a vesicle where we have our iron transferring structure like this this is known as endosome after the engulfment we call it endosome because this vesicle is produced after the endocytosis so it's endosome now this endosome fuses with the lysosome and the moment the endosome fuses with lysosome the lysosome will release the proteolytic components that will release in this case the iron from the transferring receptor the iron will be free from transferring receptor the iron will be released into the cytoplasm that's how the cell gets the iron and this is just one example there are plenty of other examples where this sort of receptor mediated endocytosis process take place in the engulfment or uptake of growth factors epidermal growth factor platelet derived growth factor okay so for all these growth factor receptor and growth factor ligand binding follows the pattern of receptor mediated endocytosis but now we'll take it one step further to discuss about the uptake of important neurotransmitters or release of important neurotransmitters and also recycling of neurotransmitter receptors in the presynaptic cleft. So the location is presynaptic cleft where the receptor mediated endocytosis is very common and there the receptor mediated endocytosis is done with the help of an adapter protein known as clathrin protein because for this for this process of endocytosis or receptor mediated endocytosis to occur they need to form this cleft 
or we can see a pit right the formation of a cleft then the vesicle will be internalized so the formation of this pit or cleft whatever you mention either you can say a pit or a cleft either of this the formation of these require accessory proteins sometimes cop proteins cop 1 and 2 may be involved or sometime clathrin protein is involved so clathrin proteins are structural proteins that provides the structural integrity and helps forming the pit or helps forming the the endosomal pit or what we can say is that the vesicle cleft while internalizing any solid component inside the cell in the presynaptic cleft it is very active okay so what happened is uh, here is in the in the clathrin mediated endocytosis the same process of receptor mediated endocytosis will be done because clathrin mediated endocytosis is a form of receptor mediated endocytosis itself so the only difference is that here the membrane you see this is the membrane this is the membrane of the synaptic vessel and uh, in the presynaptic cleft this is the location and this membrane which is involved in the formation of endocytic vesicle or endocytosis using clathrin must carry a particular structure in their membrane known as PIP PIP2 PIP2 phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate in the membrane they should be they should have this phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate which okay uh, this should be present in the membrane this PIP2 is adequate in the membrane generally in the presynaptic cleft that's why there we will see most of this cleft formation or pit formation is done by clathrin so that is kind of a marker if they have this PIP2 clathrin is generally involved in the internalization process and in case of normal cellular protein trafficking retrograde and retrograde pathway uh, we have COP2, COP1 proteins to do their job okay those are also uh, helping in the formation of uh, vesicle formation or cleft formation but clathrin is used where there is adequate PIP2 in the membrane now what else we need to understand here what else we will understand is again uh, we have this uh, let's say receptor we have this receptor okay and this receptor is present in the membrane the very first step is that the receptor will bind to the ligand ligand binding is a key without ligand binding to the, to the receptor the process will not start so there are multiple so what we can say is that there are multiple receptors in the surface and multiple ligand will bind to the receptor there they are filled like this okay and now here in in the cytoplasmic side of the cell remember this is cytosol cytoplasmic site and this is outside of the cell or extracellular side of the cell okay so upon ligand binding to the receptor this is the very first step after this process is done then there is a protein called ap2 complex ap2 complex is very important remember ap2 complex binds there okay ap2 now what this ap2 complex have ap2 complex have multiple proteins multiple subunits in it they have alpha adaptin beta 2 adaptin sigma, sigma 2 adaptin so they have, they have multiple subunits in that known as adaptin with multiple chains in it so this adaptin proteins ap full form is adapter protein okay so this adapter protein 2 complex will bind to the cytosolic part of the receptor cytosolic side of the receptor okay cytosolic side of the receptor it is done ap2 binding is done what is the job of ap2 the job is of adapter adapter's job is done by ap2 the adapter of what it adapt or connects this receptor ligands to the clathrin proteins now the clathrin proteins structurally i cannot draw the structure properly here but it looks something uh, not not four sorry 
uh, actually three not four but the similar structure like three so something like this like this like this okay or you can draw it like this these are clathrin proteins clathrin proteins like three separate arms you can see for a clathrin protein and this clathrin proteins they are going to so i'll just draw it like this okay so three arms so clathrin proteins will now connect to the ap2 because the clathrin proteins cannot connect directly to the receptor not even when the ligand is bound so the clathrin protein can only bind to ap2 that's why ap2 is required clathrin is bound the moment clathrin start to bound uh, there it start to assemble because of the structure of this protein not only that but the clathrin looks something like this so it start forming a coat like this you can see a ball shaped structure like this in the cytosolic region or cytosolic domain of the cell and then they start to cause the folding the folding start to begin right and what will happen after some time what we will see is that uh, again i'll take this so the normal membrane and what we'll see is that the membrane gets folded like this dotted structures that i draw and uh, the cath clathrin clathrin coating is present like this Clathrin coating is present like this and what else we can clearly see is that the the receptors the receptors are present and so as the ligands they are also present inside so the internalization is done just like this case the internalization is done but this formation of this cleft is done by clathrin coating done by clathrin coating which is also known as the formation of clathrin pit. This ball shaped structure that they form is known as clathrin pit, formation of clathrin pit. And clathrin pit is done. Once the formation is complete, then when the membranes are very close in the neck, this is the neck region of the vesicle. This is the neck region. So they need to clip the neck off. They need to cut it off in order to release the vesicle in the cytosol. Who will do that? A protein known as dynamine a protein known as dynamine a scissor protein we call it molecular scissor a C dynamine protein has scission function that cuts this neck of the vesicle and the vesicle gets free into the cytoplasm okay that's how simple this process is that's how the vesicle gets clipped out it is released now now in the cytoplasm what happened is that after the engulfment is done, internalization is done, we need the components, we need the ligands, right? Because we are uptaking something. So we need them released in the cytosol, not inside the vesicle. To do so, we need to, uh, what we can do is we need to get rid of the clathrin coating so that the membrane becomes naked and the naked membrane containing vesicle will fuse with the lysosome. Because if the clathrin is present, fusing it with the lysosome, is of no meaning because it will destroy the clathrin protein other proteins we need to again make clathrin protein for the next steps we should not do that so what cells do here is that they need to recycle the cath uh, clathrin they need to get rid of the clathrin proteins and make the vesicle as a naked membrane spanning vesicle okay so for that we need a dissociation cycle for this dissociation auxiliary proteins in, are involved and also another type of atpas are involved there are atpases that are involved there auxiliary protein that are involved there what they will do is they will dissociate the clathrin from the vesicle which is internalized and the naked vesicle gets released now the naked vesicle can fuse with the lysosome and the lysosome can release its hydrolytic enzymes so that we can utilize the contents that we ingested just now inside the cell so i'll show you how exactly this whole process is done here you can see that this is the clathrin coating remember and again uh, how to remember this see this is the naked vesicle and these are the components that we internalize and this is the overall clathrin molecule these are the clathrin molecules this is the clathrin coating and we need the atps function this atps function cause dissociation of clathrin proteins you can see clathrin is dissociated and uh, so as 
the AP2. AP2 clathrines all are will be dissociated and it makes only naked transport vesicle ready uh, as an endosome and it will now fuse with the lysosome remember and this fusion is very very crucial in order to take up any component that is uh, utilized by the cell to take it up to utilize it in the cytoplasm okay now uh, what are the components that are involved in here the atps that is involved here is uh, known as the hsc 70 hsc 70 hsp 70 is written in here the you know nomenclature is similar so the member of hsp 70 family hsc 70 chaperones are required and they use ATP as a ATP hydrolysis machinery here to get rid of the clathrin proteins. Okay, because we know chaperones deal with proteins. Chaperones can help the protein to be folded, prevent misfolding. So protein folding modifications are very common by the chaperones. So here the chaperones uh, like this HSP70 category of chaperones, they utilize this ATP hydrolysis machinery and with the help of this, the vesicle gets free from the clathrin coating okay the clathrin and adapters that is not only clathrin but also ap2 adapter protein 2 they are also being released and we can later utilize them and this uh, we can later utilize them for the another round of clathrin mediated endocytosis where the naked transport vesicle that is present is used for the purpose of you know they fuse with the lysosome for the purpose of release of the contents and uh, this dissociation of coat is also done by auxiline another protein write it down auxiline is also there also found to be impacting the dissociation of clathrin coating from the clathrin mediated endocytotic vesicle okay that's the overall idea of how clathrin mediated endocytosis works which is a type of receptor mediated endocytosis very commonly found in presynaptic cleft okay and also for this whole process of clathrin mediated endocytosis to occur properly you need to have pip2 rich elements in the membrane that marks as the position for the clathrin coats to be assembled and formed because of the structural preferences so i believe you have a clear idea about the clathrin mediated endocytosis if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends colleagues subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye